Good afternoon. This is Cheryl Lentz, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, doing my follow-up Friday. I'm not really following up. I was, um, <laughs> well, it kind of is. So um, Stampin' Up! is kind of doing a little push and information on watercoloring, which I love. I love, love, love. Uh, people either love it or hate it. And so I thought I'd do uh, just try a couple of things here. Now, I'm not going to guarantee how they turn out, but we're going to talk about it. Hi, Cindy. You either you either love it or you don't love it. Um, but the key to making yourself happy if you're going to do watercolor is to have the correct tools. So the watercolor paper or the shimmer paper um, to color on. So I'm going to turn the camera around, and we're just going to do a little bit of playing today. Um, how does that sound? That's what that's what we're going to do. Also, today the uh, mini catalog, the holiday catalog goes live with celebration. So with every $50 purchase, um, you can pick out a free celebration set. So I have some of the sets um, at my fingertips here too. So um, let me turn the camera around and we will get started here. Ta-da! So close your eyes if this bothers you. We're going to make a little move here gonna make a move down to my messy messy desk look I didn't even write anything on my uh, papers or anything today I'm it's just me just me so um, we were talking about watercolor um, the wonderful celebration items here I'm just gonna quick look um, look at some of these these are some of the celebration um, stamp sets that you can get for free, this one, the fi um, Happiest Hippos, is with a $50 purchase, plus they have um, uh, um, boy, I can't even talk today. Plus they have dies that go with it. And the dies have a lot of cute little things, so I can even show you. Because I can show you the catalog now. So the dies have all kinds of sweet little um, additional things for them. So they have glasses, and you can have your your hippos swimming, diving, <laughs> snorkeling. Um, they have a little bucket. I mean, there's just all kinds of cute little things. It's adorable. It's a really lovely. So $50, you get the set. Another 50, you get the dies to go with it, which you definitely want the dies. This is the paper that I looked at on that we played with on Wednesday. Um, beautiful uh, rings of love uh, paper. It does coordinate with um, the Ringed with Nature bundle that's in the um, holiday book. So, but the paper is beautiful, standalone. This is the die I was talking about that day. Um, this cute one, now I just ordered this. Um, they have pool party and soft sea foam cards and envelopes, which are really fun. Fun, quick base, right, if you're doing something fast. This, um, this one here, the stylish sketches. Love the sketches. Um, I'm going to do a watercolor with one of those. Um, cool paper, six by six. It's gold and silver. Um, some have dots, stripes, um, all different things. So a lot of fun to play with. So we'll be doing something with that. Here's the amazing phrases. This is with a $100 um, purchase, all kinds of fun phrases. Um, and then <clears throat> the tree lot dies, which for all you campers out there, what a fun fun set of dies and this also coordinates with trees for sale stamp set that's in the holiday book so lots of fun and then this we played with this paper I showed you a number of cards with the DSP and here is that stamp set that's just beautiful the wonderful world um, and then we have a host special so with a 200 and I believe with a $250 if you're a hostess is it 250 150 hostess set um, you can get this one, the Perfect Pomegranate set, so I don't have that yet. So anyhow, lots of fun, cool things. Now the key with watercolor, we have <clears throat> great paper. I love our watercolor paper. Let me get a, here, this is what it looks like. Fluid 100 watercolor paper, 100% cotton. It's thick, right? So um, you can play with both sides. <laughs> you don't like one side, you can play with the other side. So I was just kind of playing around with some of these um, while I was waiting here for my time. Um, so they had a, um, if you want to do flowers and that kind of thing, you want it to not see so much of the outline, you can do, uh, I used uh, Sahara Sand. Let me just 
pull this out here. I'm going to do Sahara Sand. Um, our water painters, water painters, now they call them, aqua, uh, come in three different, they come in a, a set of three. They have different tips, a long, narrow tip, a short, narrow tip, and then a wide tip. So depending on what you want to do, uh, let me just move some of this stuff around here. Um, I'm just going to grab a piece of this out and and start playing because I have all kinds of little pieces. I save all these little pieces because you never know what you want to watercolor or use on there. So um, don't think that because you're cutting it up that you don't need to keep those pieces because you can use those too for a border or an accent piece on a card. But I was just going to pull this out. So what they had talked about was doing watercolor where you don't see the lines, right? So if you were going to use, um, if I was going to, if I wanted the lines to show up and I wanted it dark, I would use stays on. Um, stays on is if, is if you are using anything with a watercolor um, ink. Okay, so that's all our classic ink pads. That's the re-inkers. If you know you want to use the re-inkers and, and draw out a palette and pull from those colors, or if you're using the markers, if you're using the watercolor pencils, we have two assortments of pencils. Um, you would use stays on. Um, stays on marks your um, pads or your um, stamps. There is a stays on cleaner that you can get. This is probably. It might be a different design by now. It's kind of old, but stays on cleaner. If you are using Memento, or you're using our blends, I mean, you're going to use Memento. So the alcohol-based blends, you're going to use Memento. But I would not, I don't like using the the blends on on our watercolor paper because it kind of just sucks it in, right? I like the control that you have if you're going to use um, just your water painters, your water painters. So here's some that I did. So this is this is the little, from the stylish sketches. So I colored this in, I, I stamped it with Sahara sand. And then the this one, even though this is kind of solid, I kind of stamped it off. And I just colored it in also. So it's a little bit harder. You don't see all the definite lines on this one as much. But um, with this one where you have an open sketch, it's a lot different. So we could even do the, I have the, the dog or the, the fox on the back. But I was just playing with that. But it's easier to see if you're using a, um, a flower. And the sketch, right? So the sketch is pretty much open. The color is open. It's not um, It's not a solid color, right? You want the sketches. That's what we're using here. So I'm just going to put this down. I'm going to use Sahara Sand. And this will show me all the outlines and all the things, but it won't. Um, but I can color right over it. So Sahara Sand on my paper here. I'm just going to go this way because I know I'll be cutting this up. So just give it a press. It's, it has a little texture to it, so it's a little bit, a um, little up and down, a little bumpy. Ta-da. So you're going to get a super light coloring. So, that, so you can see close up, you can see the lines and all the, you know, the detail on it. So you can color it in, but once you start adding your color, you won't. So I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go with some flirty flamingo on here. Let's go. Let's go melon mambo. Let's go melon mambo. So what I do is I take my um, ink pad. I like to press it from the bottom um, because remember the pads are on the bottom, and that's gonna build a little. Um, color well here in the on the top lid of it of your pad and so I'm going to take this is a little bit bigger flower so I'm going to just take like the medium this is a smaller one I have three of them here and I don't have the medium with me of course not so we're going to take the small one okay so here is my I have it all filled up I just have water in here <clears throat> shows you where to push 
Um, I find it easier if you do a little bit, like uh, put a little bit of water in the lid. And then you can have it as light as or as dark as you want, depending on how much ink you have. If you think you have too much, have a piece of um, paper towel there to just touch on it. And I just kind of, you're just puddling it up here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to puddle it. And then I'm going to go um, petal by petal. I think it looks nicer when you do that. Um, then go across the whole thing because you're going to have light and dark areas and you can go back and add more, but each petal will look a little bit different because your, your, your dilution, uh, the ink is diluted a little bit differently, right? There we go. And if you're, if you're doing a large piece and you think that you're not getting enough, you can just take your reinker and drop it in there. Drop a little couple dots of reinker in there to work with. Let's see here. In fact, I could do that here. Let me just. Where is my? Here's my mango melody. I love this one. And I double checked because I've reinked the wrong color once. <laughs> it's not so bad if you just put it in the lid. <clears throat> but you don't want to reink the pad with the wrong color. Not, not a good thing. And as it dries, it's going to change and look a little bit different. Now, this will be probably a little more concentrated, so a little bit darker. It's like color by numbers. It's a relaxing um, form of painting. So what I would do is, so I'm going a little bit, I did over there, and it's a little bit darker. I'm going to go back here. So I'm not painting them all just sticking i'm going to move around a little bit so that my petals are all just a little bit different as far as the color here let's see here i'm going to work around to this side and i'm just going to color in like that Ta -da, ta -da. i mean the flowers have all different hues right when you're looking at your flowers outside it just is fun. And it doesn't really take all that long uh, to color them in, but it looks so pretty when it's all done. So let's go over here. We're gonna go into this petal that's sort of behind here. Yeah, I have, um, you, you either love it or, or you don't, <laughs> but try it. I mean, I would just say, play with it, you know, for a while. Everything takes a little bit to get comfortable with. If you just, you know, turn off and say, I'm not doing that, <clears throat> you're missing out on some fun activity. <laughs> I don't want you to miss out on any of the fun. It's really, and like I said, so the reason you want to use the special paper is that if you're using um, our regular cardstock, like our, our um, basic white, it's polished. It's not going to absorb. It's going to, all that ink is just going to sit right on the top and of your paper. And you just, you don't want that because you're not, um, it's not going to absorb in and give you that watercolor look, right? There we go. See how pretty it is with all the different, um, all the different, tones of the color. Now I'm going to go a little bit darker with this part here that's kind of the flower that's kind of curved over there. And then I'll go here, my last petal. But this is really fast. And then I'm going to go a little bit darker here in the center. I'm just going to have my flower just muddy it up with a little bit more because I put the reinker in there, right? So I have a lot of ink in there. So I'm just going to go pat it around like that. Okay, and then when you want to change color, you just squeeze it where it says push, <laughs> push, squeeze, whatever, <clears throat> until you get clear, clear water running out. And so now let's do, I have old olive out here for my leaves. And I had already squeezed it. I'm just going to do another one. Just kind of push down 
and give my give myself a bigger palette here. So I'm gonna put a little water in there, play with it, go around, muddy it up a little bit. I don't want it too dark or too light, but you can always add more color to it when you're, um, you let it dry a little smidgen and then go back and add a little more color. And I like to do the stems in soft suede. I like to add a little bit uh, different color in there. There we go. So you can add shading in as you go. When you go back and add some more, decide where your light is shining from. There we go. So much fun. I, I could do this all day. <laughs> I enjoy it. I'm going to, y'all, I'm going to have some of these to do in class so you can give it a try. Okay, I'm going to squeeze that out there. I'm going to close that up and then I'm going to put a little bit of I have soft suede sitting here. So just a little bit of soft suede where I have my little branches here. I'm going to just add in that touch of brown here. Just a smidgen. And look at how fine this tip is. So it can really, you can do some really fine lines here. There we go. And then I may, my little flowers here, I'm going to add, I'm going to add blue. I'm going to make those little flowers blue. I'm going to add a little, uh, let's see here. What do I have out here? I have Tahitian Tide. Let's just see how that looks. I should, no, let's do balmy blue. That might be a little bit bright. Let's use my balmy blue. My favorite. I love balmy blue. Okay. Do I have a, no, oh, let's do this. Push down. There we go. Ta-da. Okay. So these are a little bit, just a little touch of color here. Doesn't take much to, I'm going to leave the, it's already done. You can see kind of the brown from the stems from my Sahara sand that I used. I'm just going to add a little touch. There we go. Very little. Ta-da! Now it looks like a watercolor painting. <laughs> looks like I know what I'm doing. Look at it close. So you get all the different colors and shades of the flower. Hello, Eve Evelyn. Isn't that fun? I love this technique. I think it's really fun. Now, the other thing that you can do um, on your watercolor is that you can, uh, and I, you can do like a big, huge background on here. And then later when it's dried, you can stamp it with an image. Um, what I had pulled out was the hope and prayer. And I thought this was really cool. You could do it with blues, um, different shades of blue on here. I'm going to use the other, the bigger one here. I'm going to pull out. And um, I'm just going to mess with this side. Uh, let's see here. You can do it with um, watercolor pencils where you're drawing the pencils in and then you color them. But I wanted to do the wide, um, the wider brush and do a big area. Uh, I think the key is to get your um, paper a little bit wet when you're doing that. So I'm just gonna wet this here. Kinda, they had it in the, the video they were showing, they had a, um, I'll start with some balmy as long as I have it here. And I'm just gonna kinda brush it around here. as I want to add some other colors to it also. Um, they had a little little bowl of water to get that nice and wet because the more you wet it, the more it kind of, um, we're going to do a little Pacific in there, add some darker. We could add uh, violet tones too. Um, now this one is, it's really bold, so I'm going to try to, I don't want to take it over. And then you can kind of see it bleeding out a little bit. And let's add some, let's add some violet tones here. So Highland Heather. 
I had a little of that out. I'm just going to add some of that in here too. I'm going to add more water down here. And it just sort of gives it a blotchy, kind of blotchy look. And then you can let it dry and you'll see, um, you'll get a completely different look. Because you can see that the colors are spreading, kind of bleeding into each other. Can you see that here? You can move it around a little bit and you can see it kind of blending and bleeding and creating new colors in there. So that's going to just give me a cool background. And then I want to stamp this one. Um, so next week I'll have to show you. I just want to stamp that one on there and maybe have my little um, dove cut out and over there. That's what I've been waiting to play with that one. Um, I'll show you with the pencils. So if you had your watercolor pencils, here's another piece of the paper here. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna mess, mess things up here. So, um, where did I put them? Right here. Here are my pencils. So this is just doing a background. So maybe this is how you want to start out, right? Just kind of playing with uh, with this way. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to put some color down here. That's a brighter blue. We've used this one a lot. I'm going to put green down on this end. So it's just kind of different colors. And then you can take your brush. Here we go. I'm going to get it nice and wet. And you're just going to blend your color. Look, it makes it much more vibrant. So the more you go over it, the more the colors will blend. But you can make a really kind of vibrant, cool background um, to stamp over. You want to make sure it's good and dry when you stamp over it. But the pencils are kind of neat. So if you want to just try that way where you're not doing such fine, you know, art detail work, um, that gets you started just by feeling um, the light and dark of it. And, the, and I wonder if I can, I think you can do like, you can do drops on here then of water and then it gives you <clears throat> it almost looks crystal like like if I didn't add the green you could almost do like snowflakes see it gives it kind of a crystal crystallized look spreading and adding drops different sizes so I'll let that dry out and I'll show you how I did this other little one here again using just the Sahara sand, the fine tip. Uh, let's see here, where is it? This one. It goes really fast. I'm just going to put it in the corner. There we go. I th I'm not sure what these are. I th I'm thinking that they're figs. Um, that's what I think. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but that's what I thought. So again, I'm just going with my old olive and kind of going along the edges and coloring it in really fast. Ta -da. But when you're done, it looks like you have a work of art that you colored, drew and colored. With, when you're using these sketches, they're so much fun. There we go. I guess I might be over to the side too much, huh? There we go. Ta-da, ta-da. Watch how fast. There we go. Just like that. Now I can go back and add a little bit of dark in the veining. A little bit here and there, some shading. Wipe it out. And I, I used um I used rich razzleberry. They remind me of figs. My I have an my aunt 
My aunt in Tennessee has a fig tree. Although she has to share them all the time with the deer. The deer come and eat them. But uh, we love fig jam. So I think that's what these are. That's what they are for me, at least. I'm not sure. There we go. So I have the one in the center a little bit lighter. Just so you see the different... That is a different one in there, so they don't kind of blur together. And then again, I use the soft suede for the stem. And just really light here. Ta-da! You guys, are you ready to try this in class? We need to do some of this, because it's fun. I love it. You just have to take your time. There you go. So here it is. It looks almost the same. Ta-da! But I love, so here's my background drying out, just kind of shades of color, and then my, my beautiful rose here. And here's this kind of more contemporary one, splash, the splash pad. There we go. Ta-da. Put that on. We're all set to go. Okay. I am going to turn this around. I have class coming here this afternoon my hostess club. They're going to be so excited because they can purchase from the new catalog. I'm going to turn my camera around here and they can earn celebration items. Yay! Also, um, last night, um, with orders that I had last night, I went over my 500000 for my lifetime um, sales. So I was pretty excited about that. So, Thank you so much for joining me. Y'all have a great and safe um, 4th of July. And I will see you back here on Tuesday for Talking on Tuesday at 2. Take care. Bye-bye.